So, we're talking about genetic abnormalities, blah, blah, all of that, and thus you know our final box has to be the evolution of schizophrenia. Where did schizophrenia evolve from? First sort of question you would ask is, well, do you see something like schizophrenia in other species? And you don't. You look at complex primates and you see things that look like depression. You see reactive depression. You see melancholia. You see in some cases depression so severe as to prove fatal. You don't see animals having loose associations with proverbs and concrete thought and delusions and hallucinations. Animals that start acting schizophrenic get eaten that evening. So there's not a whole lot of insight from the zoological world. There's not any animal precedence for schizophrenia. Okay, so how about in humans? How did schizophrenia evolve? We are now back to one of our first lectures. Why did giraffe have long necks? Because it's a good thing that allows them to pass on more copies of their genes because it's an adaptive trait. By the rules of Darwin, schizophrenia is maladaptive. Schizophrenics have a lower reproductive rate than their unaffected siblings. By the math, that is thus a trait that should be being selected against. Yet, schizophrenia persists at this 1 to 2 percent in every culture out there. Historical records indicate things that convincingly sound like schizophrenia have been there forever, and thus one has to bring up a question that always lurks in a scenario like this, which is, are there circumstances where schizophrenia is in fact adaptive, where it is advantageous, where it increases one's reproductive success? The only domain where that has had any evidence at all in the literature is schizophrenics appear to have a lower incidence of certain types of cancers, in particular lung and throat, esophageal cancers, and that's after controlling for smoking rates, all of that, not a big effect, but that causes people to mumble something about maybe schizophrenia was selected for its anti-cancer properties and the disease and balance selection, all of that. However, there is another possible adaptive thing that's lurking around in there. Something which causes some of these traits to not only no longer be maladaptive, to be, but to be wildly useful in certain contexts of human society. And what you'll see is it's not full-blown schizophrenia, it's the milder versions that you see in some of the relatives. And Thus, just to give you a sense of where things are heading, uh, we'll talk about that on Friday in the 